This is the equipment needed to place a nasogastric tube in a cat. We have 2% lidocaine in a 1cc syringe, sterile water for injection in a 3cc syringe, a 5 French red rubber catheter, 22 gauge needle, 3 O suture material, some white tape, suture scissors, a T-set, an injection port, and some plain white gauze. In cats where we anticipate they will be unable or unwilling to eat for several days, we can place a nasogastric tube for feeding. I'm going to use a 5 French red rubber catheter in this cat, which I'll measure to the end of his rib cage. You can see that just about all of this tube will be passed into this cat with just this little bit extending beyond his nose. I'm going to take a small piece of tape and actually mark the tube so I don't over insert it and I'll use that tape later to affix the tube to the cat's face. At this point I'm going to instill a small amount of lidocaine into the cat's nostril just to provide a little local anesthesia for the procedure and you should wait about five minutes after instilling the lidocaine for it to take effect. Now this cat is a little bit sedated. You don't have to sedate the cat if the cat has a nice temperament. You can do this technique on a cat that's perfectly wide awake. After five minutes, I'll take the catheter, dip it in some KY jelly to facilitate the passage, and actually begin to insert it into his nostril. I'm going to be aiming towards the base of his opposite ear along the ventral surface. You can see he reacts a little bit, and actually the tube goes quite easily. He's a little bit sneezy. That's not uncommon. There you go. And the holder actually should be able to tell me if she feels the kitty swallowing as this tube passes. Yes. There we go. I'm now going to affix this catheter to the cat's face just like this using a technique that will minimize trauma to the, to the cat. We're going to insert this 22 gauge needle through the bottom half of the tape, catch a little bit of the cat's skin, and right through the top half. Then I can take my suture material, thread it right through the needle, when it comes out the other side, I can just remove that needle and then my suture is in place. I'm just going to put a simple interrupted suture here to hold it in place. Now I'm going to close the end of this using a T-port so that I have access for feeding later on. And at the end of this T-port, I'll change this cap to an injection cap and then I'll be able to feed directly through that cap. Now I'm going to just take a simple piece of gauze and actually tie this in. We'll want this tube to stay in for a couple days, so we want to tie it in pretty securely. There we go. And once I have that secure, I'm going to perform a test to ensure that we're actually in the cat's stomach and not in the cat's lungs. And for that, I'm going to use sterile water, just in case we're in the wrong location. And I'm just going to inject about three cc's of sterile water into that tube. And what we're listening for is to see that the cat does not make any kind of coughing sounds at all. So that looks good. When this cat wakes up later on, we can begin feeding a liquid diet, making sure to flush this tube with about three cc's of plain water every time we do a feeding.